hi guys you're welcome to my channel this is so it's so so and today we're going to be learning how to achieve this crop top and palazzo pan please stay tuned like share and subscribe thank you So guys, if you don't know how I got this measurement, feel free to share in the comment section and I would make a video of how to measure. Let me give you a trick here. Whenever you're making a palazzo pant, please add at least 4 to 5 inches allowance to the trouser length, to the pant length. At the end, you might have to trim at least 3 inches, but just add it. So after marking our trouser length, which it's 42 i added four inches so it was 46 i marked at the side i started marking two two inches allowance please if you don't understand i'm going to refer you to the video of which we did for making a short a video of making a short it's in my channel i'm going to put the link to it so that you can see so i'm taking two inches down at the side just watch what i'm doing after marking 46 and then i carried at the side i carried two inches downwards two inches from the top to the bottom that's an allowance i'm keeping at the side there for clarity i'll repeat myself i said when you're taking your trouser length add at least four inches allowance to your trouser length for palazzo pants and then take two inches at the side from the top to the bottom of that your trouser length for allowance you will know why we took it very soon at some point i had to switch the chalk from blue to red because i felt it would be easier to see but watching this video now i think i would have just stuck with my blue chalk so all this is for you to see the lines properly and to get the line straight this fabric most times i work with shaky fabrics so you have to be careful when i was done with the lines i came to mark my body rise which is 12 inch your body rise is also not known as your crouch measurement so my crouch measurement which is my body rise is 12 inches if you don't know how to get crouch measurement or body rise do not worry i'm going to be posting a video on how to take accurate body measurement so now i'm joining all the lines i'm connecting the 12 inches line that i have marked so when you do that connect it ha ah, this fabric it is well so yeah still on connecting i'm connecting the line so that it will show very very well so that is our waist to our crouch 12 inches now i'm going to be marking from our waist to the knee waist to the knee is 20 inches i put that i put that down in our measurement in the beginning of this video so the waist to the knee is 20 inches i'm going to also show you how to measure that so not to worry just follow me you will learn successfully Now I've marked our waist to the new, our waist to our crouch. The next thing I'm going to be marking is the waist to ankle. Waist to ankle. Waist to ankle is 40 inches. 40 inches. I'm going to be marking my 40 inches. My waist to floor is 42. My waist to ankle is 40 inches plus my two inches, my four inches allowance. Please do not forget. So I'm going to connect all of them, all the lines, I'm going to be connecting it. I'm just drawing all my horizontal lines. After drawing my vertical lines, I'm drawing all my horizontal lines. Hope you are following. If you have any question, feel free to ask me in the comment section.
So I'm a very practical tailor and I believe in folding my tips to get my divisions. So like I said, our um, waist is the 36 and a half, but I approximated it to 37 and I divided it by four to get our waist. So from that line, that two inches there, but from where the thing starts, I'm going to uh, I'm going to, from that point there, I'm going to mark it what I got plus two inches. So I got 9.25 plus two inches. So in allowance, that is 11.25. 9.25 plus two inches, 11.25. So I marked it there. You saw how I marked it back? Then now I will come down to my crouch. My crouch measure, my lap measurement now, put it on my crouch, is 31. I'm going to divide 31 by 2 and I'm going to add 2 inches. Now, see how I'm going to do it now. That place, that allowance I'll put there, I'm going to come inside that allowance by 1 inch and then I'm going to measure. My measurement is going to come into that two inch allowance i kept there it's going to come into that two inch allowance like i said our lap measurement is 31 31 divided by two will give you 15 and a half 15 and a half plus two inches sewing allowance that's 17 and a half i came into that uh two inches allowance that we kept at the side i came into it with one inch the reason why we come into it with one inch is because you know our waist if we don't come in our our hip will be straight there will be no curve now on our waist to knee line our round knee is 27 inches 27 divided by 2 is 13 and a half 13 and a half plus 2 inches so in allowance is going to give us 15 and a half now watch what i'm going to be doing in that place so i'm going to measure that line first of all and what i'm getting from that line that line is giving me 16 inches i'm going to divide 16 into so that is 8 inches to get the midpoint and now the midpoint is 8 inches now that 15 i have divided by 2 is going to give me 7.8 so i'm going to take 7.8 from both sides 7.8 from both sides sorry I marked 9 instead of 8, so I corrected it with the blue and red chalk. So from there, I'm going to put our 7.8 on both sides. So I'm going to first mark 7.8 from that first side, then 7.8 from the other side, so that we ensure that our measurement is on the middle. Please don't let these two lines confuse you. That's why I used blue for the original one. I divided 16 by 2. I mistakenly marked 9 instead of 8, but I corrected myself. That's why you see one of the chalk has a blue and red on it. That's the correct line. So guys, before I forget, if at this point you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Please and please let's hit 200 subscribers. God bless you. So I'm just I'm just um, extending the lines and then I still came and I marked half of it which is 16 inches that same thing we marked on the the same eight we marked on the new line I'm still marking it which is half you know this fabric is folded and that's 16 inch so I marked it and now I'm still going to use that fifth that's a measurement that 15 and a half remember it's supposed to be 13 and a half but we added two inches to give us 15 and a half i'm extending it down because it's a palazzo pant so please take note i'm extending it from our waist to ankle and i'm also extending it down to our waist to floor and then i'm extending it down to our four inches allowance take note and now i'm going to be joining and connecting all these lines together please follow 
follow and see how I connect these lines together. If you notice that place, there is now a shape. There's a shape there. This palazzo pants is not very big. In fact, this palazzo pants is a bit fitted. That's why I'm even coming in from the hip. If it's a normal palazzo pants I'm making, most times that, whatever thing I get from the lap, I extend it down straight. So from the couch, you, I will extend it down. I don't go in. But this has a little fitting. That's why I'm going through all this. So please use your straight ruler to connect all the lines and watch how I connect it. And now to one of the most important measurements, the crouch curve. So I'm going to carry my tape and I'm going to extend whatever thing I get on the waistline. I'm going to place it on my crouch line. That means I'm marking the same waistline on my crouch line. And now I'm watch what I'm going to do now. Whatever thing is left after placing my waist measurement, that place I'm pointing, I'm going to measure it. That's what that's the difference between the waist and the lap. And now I'm getting 4.2 in that place. 4.2. Maybe 4.3, sorry. So that 4.3 I've gotten, I'm going to divide it into four. I'm going to divide it into four. But first of all, I'm going to join the lines on a straight line. I'm going to join it together. Please be, watch this part very well because if you don't have any funny shape in front of your palazzo pants or in your trouser, please you have to watch this very well so that it will sit down straight and smooth. So I've divided up my 4.3 and I got about 1.1 inch. Oh, now I'm going to get my compass and I'm going to on that line just the way I'm doing it like so watch where i'm going to place that ruler now i'm going to be looking for my angle 45 on that straight line and on top that line just the way that ruler is let it be on angle 90 we're looking for angle 45 please look for angle 45 i'm pointing my angle 45 there i'm going to extend that line with the chalk are you seeing in between angle 30 and angle 40 is angle 45 that line there Please, thank you for, thank yourself. It's even properly zoomed. So I'm going to extend the line there, just the way I'm doing it, please. Just do it like that. And after doing it, that our 1.5 that we got is on that line, 1.1, sorry. It's on that line, that angle 45, we're going to place it. Place it properly so that it, make sure it doesn't pass whatever thing you fold and you get, no matter how fat that person is. Make sure it doesn't pass two inches because if it passes two inches, my dear, that place will not be balanced. Your crouch line will not be balanced. So if you notice, our crouch line is not that high. I'm going to use my French curve to connect it, connect it very in a very proper way. So just notice how I'm going to use it to join it. Carefully join it with your French curve. now see how it looks see how it looks it's not so high it's very very down and once we finish this palazzo pants you see how balanced it's going to be so at this point i'm going to join my waistline down to my crouch lap or crouch line whatever thing you call it i'm going to join it in a curve to it and then after that I'm going to now be cutting. Thank you for coming this far. I remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.
okay guys up next we're going to cut in the back part of our palazzo pants please watch me properly you the fold you're going to be folding your fabric now that means the one under because i placed the front part on top of it make sure the folding is bigger than the folding for the front because you're going to be adding allowance at the back so guys on that place that we marked our angle 45 i'm going to be extending it with one and a half one and a half for the back so whatever thing we get got there we're going to add one and a half so just watch as i do it for the back you're going to be adding one and a half if the person is really small you can add one inch so i'm saying that if you're doing now what i'm the illustration i'm giving there is the illustration of a jumpsuit if it's a jumpsuit i'm telling my student that you can add at that point you can add zip allowance at this end we're going to be adding one inch allowance at that edge over there one inch allowance i'm extending the line and then i'm adding one inch allowance you know that the back is not as flat as the front because of our buttocks so you add that one inch allowance so that your buttocks will not pull the trouser down at this point you take your tape and start adding two inches from the top of that side to the bottom after the crouch add it from the top to the bottom and then connect it hope i'm not confusing you if you are confused feel free to ask your questions in the comment section this is a very detailed tutorial and i'm taking my time to teach it and i would like you to ask me questions so i'm going to be connecting the lines with my curve ruler again so just watch as i'm connecting it to that crouch line I'm connecting it gradually and then please there should not be any high crouch do away with high crouches you see all those crouches that you'll be seeing at the front all those on balance unsettled crouches the one that will bringing out a v-shape or a squeeze shape in front the root of those kind of crouches is a very high high crouch when you cut your crouch very high so just avoid it now i'm going to be connecting just see what i'm going to do that one inch i added at the top i'm going to slant it like so look at it i'm slanting it so i'm going to do that practically this is all for our back this is off our back i'm just trying to make sure my line is smooth so see the line there so now i take my scissors and then i'm going to be cutting it hope you are understanding i hope you're enjoying the tutorial please subscribe like and share for more contents like this So guys, I'm about to mark my pocket, pinning down my fabric. So I'm going to be going in by 2.5 inches. I'm going to be going in by 2.5 inches. Please take note. I can come in by three, but please do not pass three. Then I'm going to come in down by five inch. Highest six. I'm going back by five. Oh, I think I even came down by five point five. So please let it not come down more than six inch. And then you here you can do any shape you want. Me, I'm doing the straight shape. 
So I'm going to draw a straight line like that. But you can curve it anywhere you want to do that you'd like. You can do it. So now I'm going to trim out what I have done. Take note that the two front pieces are on top of each other. This is not going to make mistake when right? doing this and go and carry the back piece. Make sure it's the front piece you are carrying. And then after that, I'm going to unpin. Up next, I'm going to be cutting out my band. I'm going to be using uh, our waist measurement is 36 and a half. I'm going to be using 40 inches for our band, 40 inches. Then uh, the wideness is 2.5. That is five inches. When you fold it, it should be 2.5. Take note. we're going to be cutting is the interfacing for our pocket so what what i'm doing i'm going to trim it out the same shape i'm going to trim it out and then after trimming it out i'm going to fold it i'm going to fold it in like that please when you fold it make sure at least it should be around after folding it should be around eight and then i confirmed it so that it will not come into the place i'm going to put my dad because we're going to put in that in our palazzo pants so now after that i'm going to trim it out so trimming it out take notes we're going to be cutting two pieces for the pocket so we're cutting this out this is the other part. Now, this piece I'm cutting is on a straight line. See, I nearly bent. See, if I had bent, I would have con condemned it. It's on a straight line. You know, we cut out sort of so we're using that part to replace it. So, that's the shape of the interfacing for our pocket. And we've got another one that looks exactly like that. We are done with our palazzo pants, and next, we're moving to our crop top. The crop top, we're going to be using 17 inches. Because it's going to be a band the full length is 20 inches because our client has my client has a big tummy so i don't want it to be exposed so i'm going to use 17 inches with our which is our original half length and i'm going to add a band of three inch now i'm going to take in two inches for zipper allowance for the back zipper allowance two inches then i'm going to connect the line Now we're going to start marking we're coming down with one inch because the neck is a high neck at the back because we are going to be adding that band like stuff then i'm going to come in by 3.5 after the zipper allowance and i'm going to come down with one inch to extend what i've taken from the zipper allowance then i'm going to connect it in a curve then after then we're going to mark out the full shoulder which is 18 inches divided by two that is eight then i'm going to come down for the armhole which is nine inches and then i'm going to be coming down by one inch from that top for shoulder slope i'm going to i'm going to slant it on a straight line on a slanted line sorry so i'm going to do it the shoulder slant shoulder slope there right there then I'm going to come down and start marking my points. Our bust is 46. 46 divided by 4. That is 11.5 plus 2 inches. That's 13.5. Well, our folding is not enough, so I'm going to leave it at 13. And then our, I'm going to mark 11 inch at down because when you divide 11 and a half because when you divide 36.5 divided by 4 and then you add 2 inches allowance you get that now i'm going to do my armhole curve I'm using my free hand to do my armhole curve i'm going to curve the armhole and then i'm going to join all the lines together hope you understand what we did
so guys when i was done cutting i make sure i notch my zipper allowance please do not forget notch the top and the bottom before you even decide to divide it with your scissors so at this point guys i folded my fabric into two then i placed the back the back pattern on top of the fabric and then i traced out the back pattern The next thing I did was to mark half of 9 inch which is 4.5 I came in by half and then I connected it for the front and then I came down for our neck depth with 6 inches and I took my ruler and straightened it into that allowance that is there that is 5 inch extension from the original back piece the back uh, measurement so I extended my allowance there is five inch so I'm going to, going to use my ruler to form straight line a slanted line not a straight line slanted line straight down into that five inch allowance this is because the top is cross it's a cross top it's a cross top so take note see the way I did it just do what I did there want it to come down like it come down from you you can come down for your neckline by it as deep as you want but i'm using six because this lady is busty her boss is 46 and i don't want to story really that touch at this point this video is lengthy and your girl is tired of the voice over anyways we'll continue now from that place that I ended before the five inches allowance and notch because that's where the crossing is going to start from so that place I notch now is the extension from the original size so now watch how I'm going to cross it and the reason for the notch so I'm going to cross it like so the notch will touch the notch see the notch there touching each other so that's why I'm going to be crossing it Take note, notch so that you will not get confused on how you're going to place it. So now, now that I've notched it, I've gotten the original part. Guys, this part is the sleeve. I'm marking the sleeve. I'm using 10 inches. And this sleeve is further into four because I want to make I want to get a full circle. Our sleeve is not a full circle, it's half a circle. It's like 180. But I'm going to use I'm going to be using marking a full circle then i'm going to use it divide it by two and use it to get my two sleeves so this i'm marking this 10 inches i'm marking here now i'm going to use it for my this folding now for my two sleeves so just watch i'm marking 10 round so have you heard is of a saying of every cook with his own formula but the soup will still come out the same so this is my way of marking my own this is my method i'm using i'm coming in with three inches from that place and then i'm coming down with seven inch notice please do not allow that down part to be long longer than the topper part because it will look funny it will look as if i don't know how to explain it you know how peplum used to be the down part of peplum is shorter than the upper part so i came in with three inches and i came down with seven inch when you when i mark it now when i check my tape you see i'm going to get nine inches so please and please beg you in the name of god our god our father the way i did it do it like that look at the down part is slimmer it's thinner than the upper part and I'm going to still have to trim it later i'm still going to trim it so i'm dividing this into two now because i said i'm going to use this as two sleeves so that's the division there so thank you so much for watching thank you for coming this far with me please subscribe and turn on your notification bell for more videos and there's going to be a part two where i'm going to show you how i joined and ended up with this result so watch out i'm going to show you how i'm going to join all these things that we have got thank you so much i love you